Ring rocks. Noise from Vegas. The following is a live LV Rocks original webcast. Visit LVRocks.com for studio cam and live chat room. Knowledge is power, and this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Welcome to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour on LVRocksRadio.com. I'm Kurt Ducott, your host, and today in the studio I have Perry Haichu and William Beach Baker. And, of course, behind the boards, DJ making us sound great. Yeah, so, he is. Uh, if you'd like to call in today, the studio number is 702-479-5254. So... Right. Wow, it's uh, been a busy week in uh, cannabis with uh, a yeah, 420, happy 420. Huh? How course, about that? Course. Yep, lots, lots of, of local news. Yeah. yeah, lots and lots of stuff going on. Uh, the, How many shops open this week? Uh, I'm not sure the exact total. I mean, the Grove opened up this w- last week. Uh, uh, the uh, Bloom dispensaries opened up that I know of. Um, right. Yeah. I'm not sure. How many others actually opened? Well, and some of them also celebrated their grand opening, even though they opened yeah. a few weeks ago. I think uh, Sahara, Sahara Wellness and a few others. I think Reef opened recently. There yeah. Was a whole, there was yeah. A whole so bunch everybody was kind of celebrating. It was like a holiday. It really oh, yeah. was. It was oh, quite it incredible for yeah. Vegas, you know, <laughs> um, because uh, we haven't officially celebrated it quite like this before. You know, I think um, I think Bill Mayer, one of those celebrities, was talking about trying to get a petition started to make 420 like a real national holiday that's kind <laughs> of unofficially celebrated. Because, yeah. like he says, he's like, you know, more people yeah. across the country actually take their time to celebrate this than a lot of other, you know, phony holidays that we mm. actually do celebrate. Right. So, you know, out of all the things we we uh, we take time out for, maybe we should do that. Or I, I don't know. I don't know if it, it really is. Uh, there yet, but maybe once we cross that magic threshold oh. of 25 states that are going forward, and we get a disproportionate. Well, yeah, if we if we get to that place of a holiday, then we could have Tommy Chong on a like a fifty dollar bill or something like that. You know, <laughs> I, know. I mean, you got to be know. dead first. We don't want that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think the federal, federal government's going right? to go for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, speaking so. of 420 up in Reno, you know, we love our people up in Reno, and sometimes they're a little more advanced and forward than we are, even. And they're, they jumped the gun. They've got dispensaries up there and a lot of uh, great things going on in, up in the Reno area. But they, um, Sunday, celebrated Earth Day. Earth Day was actually last Friday, but they celebrated it in their park on Sunday. And they uh, actually had a dubbed the Cannabis Clinic, which included Nevada Botanical Science and the Nevada Medical Marijuana Association and area dispensaries. Earth Day events were Sunday, the 24th at uh, 11 a.m. in Idlewood Park in, in Reno. And we know that people have a lot of questions about uh, marijuana, so anyone over 18 years old was able to go to the park and uh, go to the booth, get some information, talk to these different scientists and doctors, and uh, I think that's incredible. I think that's great. I, I hope Wonderful. by next year we'll do something like that, you know? Well, they, they're doing something along those lines down here in Las Vegas. I mean, mm. on, on uh, Sunday, Digipath Labs had their, uh, their patient day where it was educating the patients, and they had doctors okay. there, and they had nurses there, and they had local groups. Uh, Weekend was there. Um, there was also a uh, few other dispensaries there and staff mm. answering questions and informing the, the public about cannabis and its use in general. And then you could also take a tour of the labs if you went there. So, Yeah, so, yeah. And th- that's fascinating. So yeah, keep is. an eye out for those events. Uh, we'll be posting more stuff like that if you want to see what yeah. the inside of one of these cannabis labs looks like. Well, some of them are quite I think that would be pretty cool. I'd like to take a tour because of that. Like, uh, I think it's a grow where you could, you sort of step up and you kind of look down on the weed, you know, and it's like, ooh, you know. It's, so some of these are pretty, pretty cool, pretty mm-hmm. cool places, you know. And okay. even if you're not a patient, a lot of them open up, especially for their grand openings, they open up to everyone. Yeah. The public well, I'm it. just grateful that these places are willing to put themselves out there and attempt to actually build some community instead yeah. of just opening the doors quietly and doing right. their thing. So right. it, 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 uh, I guess people have questions, serious questions, people who are kind of yeah. starting to come out of the canvas closet a little bit and, right. you know, they don't really know who to go to and doctors seem safe. So yeah. it's yeah. a, it's a good, it's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll be holding another event like that. Um, 
not at DigiPath, but at uh, the Thrive Cannabis Marketplace on first Friday, May okay. 6th, uh, right down the road from our booth that first Friday. Mm-hmm. So you come out to our booth, and we'll give you a flyer to show you where the Thrive is. They're doing a, a preview celebration. Preview celebration there. Sorry. There you go. And uh, yeah, they're gonna live have, on radio. Yeah, they're gonna have uh, food and drinks and DJs and live entertainment. Uh, is that a new shop that's opening? Yeah, a new shop that's opening. And this this event is open to the public because uh, they're act, they're actually opening for business on Friday, May thirteenth. So this is uh this is an event educating the public about it, and uh, they're gonna be doing tours of their facilities, and they're gonna have on site doctors and kind of a. Yeah. Kind yeah. of a little more informal, a little yeah. more first Friday ish, because they're located right down there, mm-hmm. downtown on Commerce Street. So. Yeah, okay. that would be convenient. That's cool. Because yeah. there'll be thousands of people walking around. So if you like an eclectic event with a lot of different art and a lot of uh, interesting people, uh, come on out the first Friday. It's uh, 18 blocks of the Arts District. Yeah, and uh, first Friday, Friday itself is getting a little mm-hmm. smaller within that 18 blocks. But it's still a lot of fun, and thousands of people come out. And uh, it's going to be warm. It's going to be wonderful. Um, and come out and support us. Yeah, we'll, we'll be located uh, behind the Arts Factory again this time. And uh, we got lots of new product on, on, on the shelves. We got, we've got we been stocking up. So if you come out, get your, your socks, your soaps. we got new dab tools, new cases, all sorts of stuff from a lot of wholesale places. So come on out and pick up some gifts for, for your significant stoner in your life. <laughs> and uh, help the patients in Nevada because 100% of the proceeds that we get from selling these products we go to help patients mm. with. So, yeah. so yeah, come on out the first Friday. Have a little bit of fun. Uh, we're going to have water at the booth this time because it is starting to get hot. So if you're out at first Friday and you need, need a drink, come on over to the weekend booth at the Arts Factory. Mm-hmm. Cool off and have yeah, a drink good. and, you know talk with us a little bit yeah so. and there's a lot of good food too <laughs> yeah lots and lots and lots and lots, <laughs> lots of, good of good food so um yeah so you know uh there's a report coming out of reno also did you see uh, about the uh, nevada did two hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars in sales tax yeah i, yeah, I heard I about that it. um w- what time frame does that encompass is that since the program was initiated since the first shop yeah, opened, since it was legalized in and july up until, and up until yeah. when when was the when were the numbers well, taken because like a whole like you said a whole bunch of shops have opened yeah, just in the past yeah, week or two a lot year. of them opened um this is this is uh, i believe like in the last couple of weeks this report came okay. out so it was probably current up to that these numbers they may seem a little bit low con- mm. compared to what we're hearing coming they out of do. denver or colorado and washington and that right. but you also got to remember that this is since it was legalized in July. The first dispensary didn't open until almost September, right. and and there was only two or three in the game until you know early the beginning parts of this year. Mm. Most of them that are open have recently opened. Right. So this number, when we look at it next year, is going to be considerably higher. Absolutely, Absolutely. and as we add more Absolutely. patients to the rolls yeah. every exactly. day, I think there was a blurb in there about how many patients are on the program right now. Also, they included yeah. in that, and I think somewhere around in 2014 we had around 55, 5,600 patients. Mm-hmm. I got one of those stats yeah, here somewhere enough. like that, and now we have over 16. Thousand patients, right? And it's growing because uh, I was reading just last month alone, uh, they had 18 people on the waiting list. Well, 1800 people on the waiting list. Wow, you think that's attributed to the possible yeah. ability and, to download it, it online and yeah, the speeding it's up of the process? Interesting because uh, most of the people are older people mm-hmm. and they're taking the time to get a license, mm-hmm. you know. And it's really perking the ears of the, of the bureaucracy mm-hmm. because they know what the age group and the demographics is. And that's a big voting block. Sure, of, of course. So they when, show up. When that voting <laughs> block, the boomers and the older people and the, even the millennials, whatever, they start popping up, it's getting noticed. Yeah. It's getting noticed. Well, you know, and, and for those of you who ask, where, where is all that tax money going? Uh, out of it, $171,949 went into accounts for the schools, for our mm. education. Yeah. So hopefully we can get Nevada out right. of that, that 50 spot and start us moving up the line there. And then about 25% or about $57,316 went to the state health division. So, Is that to keep the program itself going or is that just to the health yeah, division? that's, that's okay. the health division to, to pay for yeah. the extra employees they needed to staff for the right. licensing and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So and that's been a little bit of a battle. It uh, has. Getting extra people. Uh, so hopefully in the next legislative session, we'll fix oh. some of these uh, well, issues. But this is know. what's going to drive the revenue. You know, like yeah. you said, oh, you know, this and that. Like as 
1,800 people are on the ra- waiting rolls right now. That's a significant jump mm, after mm, those just right. those get cleared right there. We're right. going to see what maybe 20, 30 thousand next year mm. if we're lucky. If the well, if the numbers keep increasing in this the numbers at this speed. the numbers are actually going to start to increase faster. We're going to yeah. we're going to get a real climb here because they've now made it a downloadable application and hopefully within the next month to two months this this online stuff that they're doing it's going to take anywhere between three to eight days right to complete your application yeah that'll make okay. a big difference so, for a lot of people that, yeah it's going to be a huge difference and none of this right. waiting for months and months <coughs> to get your card yeah right. you know and uh that's that's part of the reason people still aren't getting their cards in nevada the state recently issued a thing about people using california mm. ids the reason people are going around the system and getting California IDs instead of Nevada IDs is because one, they're half the price or less. Two, you can get them the same day. Right. Same exactly. day, you can get access to your mm-hmm. medication the same day the doctor says you can use it. Whereas as a Nevada patient, you got to wait on the state, and currently mm. it's it's literally taking a month to two months is is what it's averaging. So right. well, they're like, shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. are, and there's no reason to do that. I mean, they have the technology to do. Oh, this. sure they do. Yeah. They just don't want to do it. I yeah. think it's going to cost and them some money. It's just like the DMV and all the, all the crap they've been going through. You know, the lines and all the different programs they've been trying to institute now and do it in advance and do it a text message and stuff like that. Well, so uh, hopefully they'll iron all these bugs out. Just, and also the know. word about reciprocity, you know, as more shops are opening, yeah. they're going to do more advertising and it's just going to become a, you know, like a snowball. And I, yeah. I, I'm just hoping that a lot of these, uh, a lot of these tourists coming in are actually going to be able to have the word gotten out to them legally that mm-hmm. these dispensaries are here and available for them. I'm not mm-hmm. sure that a lot of these people are even aware of what's going on. Well, well r- right now they claim that 60% of the business dispensaries are getting is out of state. state. Yeah. 60%. So wow. they're, they're definitely California. getting the word out. And um, as we know, on any given day, there's more people in Las Vegas from California than any place. Sure. And uh, sure. They're, they're our best word of mouth advertising. Yeah. And, you then, and then you got companies yeah. out there like uh, 420 Tours where they have right. their limos that have on the top dispensary tours driving up and down yeah. the strip. Right. They, they have people out on the strips wearing t-shirts mm. that say ask me about legal weed and you know right. so that they you know can get them to these dispensaries because these people don't know where they are and that company will actually pick you up at your hotel or, or from your hotel drive you to the dispensaries on the way there if you don't have your california card they will help you get your california card you know, take you to a couple dispensaries and then drive you back to your hotel when, it, when it's done and you're good to go yeah so and you know this is part of the thing that the state's complaining about you know but it's you know, we got recreation right around the corner, it looks like. We're right. going to pass here in November, so I don't see why they're creating such a big deal over something that's going to be a non-existent right. issue in less than a year. Yeah, you know? and the interesting thing is it's, it's one piece of bureaucracy that could, they could put in place that will pay for itself. You know, th- that's I funny mean, you would they're going to generate billions and billions of dollars. Like he was talking you know. about how uh, they're doing these things as possible, you know, preemptive to... Uh, to legalization mm. and there's an article right here about people in phoenix doing the same thing it says right. the phoenix uh phoenix city council they they're starting to put the clamps down on the on the dispensary zoning a little bit you know they added a few uh qualifying facilities that you can't have a dispensary within a quarter mile of they added daycare centers homeless shelters and youth community centers to the list of places and it was an eight to nothing pa- uh, eight to nothing vote and all these changes are moving swiftly through the city process as Phoenix prepares for the possible legalization of recreational marijuana through a statewide voter initiative. Mm. Now, what that's telling me is that these entities are expecting it to pass, Right. obviously, because yeah. if they didn't consider it a, a serious threat, right. they wouldn't be addressing it and they would just let it slide. Yeah. So, you that's know, I guess we could take that however we want. We can say, oh, well, this is terrible. Or we could see it as uh, like a... Uh, a sign of things possibly to come so yeah. you know we'll, we'll see how it goes it's, this is interesting because we've actually talked this we've been on the uh, nevada cannabis news hours we're in our third year and we talked about this over the years um how uh, the we're ba- we're battling against these different agencies and these different uh, entities and believe it or not uh they're greedy little dogs and they want control and a lot of these government agencies that have politicians that aren't in favor of the issue they're still going to rough ride all these things, you know, yeah. and uh, we'll overcome, you know, we just haven't won the war yet. We're winning mm. all the battles, 
but we haven't won the war. And so uh, rest assured, given time, the citizens are going to demand that they change these things or toss the bums out, I hope, you know. And um, so we're, we're all fighting it, you know. Okay. And uh, it's close to our border. I think what's going to happen is uh, Nevada's developing a pretty good system. It's very tight controls, uh, l not a lot of pesticides, not a lot of problems in our industry yet. And uh, I think uh, Arizona and some of the states around us are going to look at what we're doing. We're all learning from each other, and hopefully we'll develop a, a really good program. You know. No doubt. Maybe someday we'll get the... Uh Someday we'll have the ability to do interstate commerce, and that will be a yeah. beautiful thing. Considering well, that, that's all these the legal idea. states are slammed right next to each other, you right. know, all they're all on the West Coast yeah. down there. Yeah. yeah, it's just like the driver's license thing back in the 50s and the 60s, and the states started getting uniform driver's license. They had to figure out how to get a national parity, you know. So basically, they had to have a federal standard. Right. And so eventually, out of all these models, we're building that. We're building that, and some, standard, somehow yeah. we'll come up with something that works, and that way we can have real reciprocity across the nation. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So uh, we're about ready to take a break here very soon, so I want to make sure that you all know who our sponsors are and, you know, go out there and support these people. These are the people that make this show possible for us. We have Nevada Pure located out there on Boulder Highway. Really good people out there, great medicine out there. Uh, Sahara Wellness on 420 East Sahara Wonderful. Conveniently located. Yeah, wonderful <laughs> ladies out there doing a great job. Essence Vegas, they're on the west side on TROP. They're located on Las Vegas Boulevard and on the east side over on Sunset Parkway. So uh, Digipath Labs hosted that event this Sunday. Yeah. Great, great people. Uh, keep keep in mm -hmm. touch with us, so we'll see what's going on with them. And gettinglegal.com to get your med medical marijuana card. So with that, we're going to go into a break here, and we'll be back with our guest, Dr. William L. Courtney. Originating from Las Vegas, Nevada, you're listening to LV Rocks, noise from Vegas. Hi, I'm Armin Yemenijin, CEO of Essence Dispensaries, and I'd like to let you know a little bit about our company. As a completely complimentary service, our on-site nurse is here to meet with any patient or non-patient to discuss dosing and best practices. We have three convenient locations. We have one location on Tropicana between Decatur and Jones, which is our west side location. Our Henderson location is on the corner of Sunset and Green Valley Parkway, and we're proud to announce that we have the first and only dispensary on the Las Vegas Strip, on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara. Our prices are the lowest prices in town and the highest quality medicine please come and see us at one of our three convenient locations or visit us at essencevegas.com you can also call us at 702-978-7575 once again the number is 702-978-7575 attention medical marijuana patients did you know that your medicine could contain pesticides heavy metals and even mold are you really sure that you're getting the same potency every single time? Well, the answer to that question is simple. Digipath Labs. Digipath Labs is a state-approved laboratory run by scientists. So look for the Digipath Labs quality seal on your next medicine and on the door of your favorite dispensary. To learn more, go to digipathlabs.com. That's D-I-G-I-P-A-T-H labs.com. Getting Legal offers an informative and simple way for you to get your marijuana card. Why come to Getting Legal to get your marijuana card? We have a 99% approval rating and the lowest price in town. Avoid legal problems. Getting Legal can get you legal fast. Ready for a new start? Come in now and get relief from your chronic conditions affecting your quality of life. Call Getting Legal today at 702-979-9999 at 702-979-9999 or visit our website at gettinglegal.com to get your marijuana card today. LV Rocks, noise from Vegas. LV Rocks, noise from Vegas. Knowledge is power, and this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the News Hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. 
Welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. We have our uh, guest on the line today. Our guest is Dr. William N. L. Courtney. He has an extensive medical education that began with a Bachelor of Science in Microbiology from the University of Michigan. He also received his Doctor of Medicine from Wayne State University, an intern for residency in psychiatry at California Pacific Medical Center, and went on to earn his postdoctorate in forensic examination and forensic medicine. Dr. Kurt Courtney is a currently a member of uh, the American Academy of Can Cannabinoid Medicine. Cannabinoid Medicine, the International Cannabinoid Research Society, the International Association of Cannabis as Medicine, and the Society of Clin Clinical Cannabis. Dr. Courtney has also been teaching continuing medical education courses in clinical cannabis. Welcome to the show, Dr. W Courtney. How are you doing? Doing very well. Thanks for having me. Yes. Thank uh, you for calling in. Yes. So uh, where, where are you right now? Um, in a rainforest down near Venezuela. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Very good. Sounds like a beautiful place. So, um, you've you've done a couple of documentaries, the Raw Truth with uh, Dr. William Courtney, uh, and uh, I also saw a thing Leaf uh, uh, just recently uh, about the powers of raw cannabis and juicing. So, um, what's the difference between the usual way of consuming cannabis and consuming it raw? Hello? Yes, um, no. the volume is pretty low. Could you speak up a little bit? Uh, yeah. What, 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 would, what would the – you, you uh, advocate for the use of raw cannabis. What, what's the difference between consuming it raw and the normal way that people usually consume cannabis? Well, if we look at normal critically, if we look at the last 34 million years, if you looked at hundreds of millions of animals, the way they consume cannabis is – uh, what's in their environment, and we know that leaf is present for six, seven, eight, nine months out of the year. And so the consumption of raw leaf really is the normal use of the plant. Um, it takes human beings to develop the ability to shift um, a dose. Um, if you look at a 100, 200 pound mammal, a deer, bear, um, they're going to be consuming 30, 50 uh, micrograms of THC where humans on the average are doing uh, 10, 15, 20, 30,000 micrograms. So w when you say normal, it depends a lot on the perspective. Uh, I've had the uh, great uh, opportunity to work with almost 8,000 individuals in Northern California who are growing a lot of cannabis and providing it to individuals in the city. And the nice thing about the person who is actively growing they have uh, raw cannabis in their environment, and, and so therefore have easy access uh, to cannabis as food. And it's becoming pretty clear that uh, cannabis as food is, is really incomparable for both uh, the restoration of health, the treatment of disease, and ideally for the prevention of disease. And um, that's kind of been my focus for the last decade. Wow. I've, I've, I, I've never heard anyone put it so so plainly before uh, yeah. I, I've never really experimented with it to tell you the truth oh, I'm, I'm, I'm missing you uh, William sorry um, I've never heard someone that has put so much research into this before what led you to experiment with this originally why did you choose to investigate this over more traditional forms of cannabis usage uh, because my practice uh, was in Northern mm -hmm. California Mendocino Humboldt Trinity where the, all those communities are very active in growing cannabis. And so I had, uh, I had access to patients that had been using cannabis for salves and topical and tinctures and had been drying and, um, and consuming it dry. Um, and it was at a conference in St. Savoie, Canada, that I learned that the, the terpenes, the aromatic, the smaller molecules, the 10 to 15 carbon molecules, which are so volatile that they drift on the air. So when you walk up on a plant that's in bloom, you can smell it hundreds of feet or further away. Those are the terpenes that are just draft and that are floating on the air as they move away. Well, those molecules are very, very important. And so at that point, we decided to switch from dried leaf to fresh leaf to uh, capture and retain that uh, terpene content in addition to the cannabinoid content. Very, very interesting. Thank you. So, um, I was uh, I was watching a couple documentaries just uh, just recently. Actually, we have you on our website from an article back in January. Um, this is a family business for you. 
Um, it, it, it is. My wife has uh, multiple autoimmune disorders and had discovered that cannabis was very helpful to her uh, when she was in the Midwest and moved to California for safety. And uh, we met first in California, and then we attended a conference, essentially that one in St. Savoie, and have been together. Um, she's got the intense personal experience, and I've got the uh, childhood love of microbiology, biochemistry, and what this plant uh, is capable of doing to provide cell health. Well, it seems like a lot of growers are developing high, both high THC and high CBD strains to suit different uh, markets. You know, the CBD is obviously used more on the medical side. You know, high, high THC strains are very popular on the recreational side for obvious reasons. Uh, do, do you see any other of these? Because I'm looking at a chart right here that your team sent over, and it seems like there are a myriad of other uh, active substances within the cannabis plant that aren't really focused on at this point. Would you see? Would you uh, like to see growers focus on those to in order to develop this research further? Or I, it, yeah, it would be it would be uh, the greatest uh, fortune of my life to come into contact with very very old seeds and look at the genetic profile over ten thousand years ago before we began selectively hybridizing it uh, for a particular molecule for THC, THC acid. Uh, we do know that uh, many mammals are very selective. If you put out 10 different genetics um, and the animal can choose amongst them, they tend to uh, avoid the high CBD plants. Um, they tend to kind of gravitate towards ones that have a more moderate distribution because, like you said, we're up to 150 different 2021 carbon cannabinoids, 130 uh, terpenes, and when you look at the mixtures, the ratios, the permutations and combinations of numbers of that size, the, the plants are, uh, you know, are very unique and capable of providing uh, access to a, a lot of these molecules. And so I'm, my current focus has been on trying to pay attention to what wild turkey and bear and boar and rabbits and raccoons and what other animals um, prefer and and begin there to say, well, if you had your choice of a high CBD plant, why wouldn't you do that if that's the solution to um, you know, a dietary satisfaction and, and uh, physiologic health? And uh, they, they tend to kind of gravitate towards plants that have a more broad-based spectrum, and that really would make sense because the complexity of the uh, endogenous cannabinoid system, um, in particular how it regulates um, growth and health inside of the cell, the intracrine environment, is exploding with new information. We're now labeling receptors according to the organelle to which they're attached inside of the cell. Mm -hmm. So there was a whole presentation on MTCB1, which are mitochondrial CB1 receptors. Well, there's also CB2, GPR55, which could become CB3. Most likely we'll find a GPR18, uh, GPR35, GPR119. So a very complex um, intracellular environment. And we know that the different uh, constituents in cannabis have activity at different receptors. And so if a plant is uh, has a more broad distribution, there's a pretty good chance that it could be interacting with a wider array of these receptors and possibly facilitating that uh, cell function. So the, so the ultimate goal is to make kind of a, a cannabis multivitamin that covers all these bases in a, in, a very profi in a very balanced way or something like that in order to use it medicinally? That's, um, and it would, I, you only need it medicinally when you've failed to use it as a dietary essential. Oh. Probably is no other food substance on the planet that is as important in the diet. Does not take a lot, has to be living or fresh because heat and aging and drying radically shift the profile of the chemistry in this plant. But if you're willing to use it the way you use uh, arugula and spinach and romaine and, and broccoli and kale, if you're willing to just use it as a leafy green product, it is, uh, it's sweeping in its ability to uh, provide cell protection and enhance cell function and cell health. I think variety is, is likely to turn out to be useful, that 
if you look at some uh, of the uh, work Brian Whittle, Table 2 of his pharmaceutical formulation patent, looks at different ratios of cannabinoids having an impact on different medical situations. And so if you're willing to do some 3 to 1, some 1 to 3, and some 1 to 1, and some you know, occasionally maybe a 95.5, now maybe a, a high CBD once in a while, or a high THC, um, I think uh, that type of a broad approach um, probably is going to lend the best dietary support to this um, endogenous cannabinoid system. So not only should I be adding my raw cannabis leaves to my smoothies in the morning or whatever I make uh, if you're juicing, but I should be adding a variety of cannabis leaves. Don't stick with just one. Mix it up a bit. Uh, so basically we have to work on a way, I guess when recreational cannabis comes, people will be able to grow their own legally. Yeah, no. And uh, that could lead to to basically growing what you per perceive as food or herbs uh, in addition to your medicine and e eating it as food as well as consuming it. This is, I mean, it, it's just so different for me. I'm sorry I'm repeating myself over, but I'm just having a... But it's, it really is, I mean, you hit it right on the head. Uh, I have a lot of patients that are using sprouts uh, and microgreens in, in, uh, in the off-season because you can grow those in the window without fancy lights and equipment. Yes, sir. Um, you can, uh, if you go to North Korea, you can get raw cannabis at the grocery store, which is where it belongs. What? It is a leafy green sure. vegetable that protects the cells of your body in a phenomenal way. There's a series of interesting articles on survival kinases, which are an enzyme that mediate the uh, transfer of a message that arrives to the plasma membrane around the outside of the cell, takes that message and turns it into a cell product. And an increase in thyroid, a decrease in thyroid, it can direct a cell to divide or the cell can rupture in aptosis and die. So these, these, these classes of enzymes that the uh, cannabinoids impact have an incredible influence on cell function. And it's interesting that an incredibly low dose of these cannabinoids uh, change these enzymes, and these enzymes, once altered, can continue to provide benefits for not seven hours, not seven days, but for seven weeks. I mean, an incredible long-acting shift in cell protection. We're talking protection from carbon monoxide poisoning, from ischemia, which is what a heart attack or stroke is, where you decrease blood supply oxygen and you have cell death, from PTZ, which induces seizures, it blocks that, from pentobarbital, which is an anesthetic that produces neurologic deficits, protects you from those, protects you from inflammation, uh, you know, from LPS, MDMA excitotoxicity protects you from that. So you have this incredibly broad array of cellular protection provided when you consume cannabis in the same dosage schedule as other mammals uh, our size. So and when we just, say other it's, mammals it's are... It's a humbling um, approach, um, but it's one that has uh, tremendous, tremendous benefits uh, once you uh, include include cannabis as a leafy green vegetable in your diet, mm. and mm. I was I was watching a couple of your videos. You a, you recommend like an average dose of what two small flowers and fifteen leaves a day. That was um that was a that was uh it was a couple it was a little while ago. I mean mm. that's the problem with uh, the internet is that there's there's stuff from two thousand and six and seven and eight and nine and ten mm. eleven twelve, and I am responsible for encouraging. When we were pursuing the 600 milligram, which was the dose that uh, was an investigative new drug dose uh, for the treatment of psychosis and Parkinson's, um, and, you know, maybe based on the five milligram per kilogram body weight, but some a more recent research is showing that rather than a thousand micrograms, we're down there towards a hundred, and that hundred micrograms having an effect for two months really could be broken into 20 to 30 micrograms over that two-month period, which would sustain the, uh, uh, the, the, the benefits of dietary cannabis on cell health um, in a more incremental fashion. Well, is there, Doc, uh, tell me this. Is there a place where you can actually, uh, there's a lot of dispensaries around, obviously, but is there a place where you can actually get some of the good juices and some of the good uh, cannabis products that you're talking about? Uh, if you go to Washington, D.C., District Growers is an organization that provides okay. four or five different cold-processed 
raw cannabis juices mixed with mangoes or vegetables. There's actually three or four companies that are beginning to move into the raw cannabis, but the we can approach has got to kick into overdrive and become the we must approach. We mm. must yeah. protect the right to how, cannabis as food. Um, how the long problem will it's, is? Oh. It, sorry, go ahead, sir. What's that? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I said that we just there's uh, a lot of effort to prohibit individuals from um, having raw cannabis in their garden in their diet um, and it's it's, uh, it's it's absolutely critical that we you know as Thomas Jefferson said that when you let government determine what food you eat and what medicine t- you take um, you're living in a state of tyranny and uh, this is uh, this is a leafy green vegetable with phenomenal ability to prevent disease and that probably is its biggest problem is that if you prevented a lot of disease, you would shift the character of a, a $2.8 trillion industry um, that really kind of likes the, the treatment of disease. Um, and and it's, in the absence of disease, you, uh, you don't have a lot to treat. And so there are very, very, very powerful forces that are trying to prevent raw cannabis from, from becoming, uh, you know, available. Mm-hmm. Like I said, North Korea, it's available at the grocery store. North Korea refuses to have a central bank, which enslaves every member of society by, re, by collecting a third of their labors in the way of interest for your housing. You know, so sometimes we, do, we may not have an accurate picture of, uh, you know, we may have you know, certain, certain colors painted for us. Well, there's a very strong effort to paint raw cannabis as bad. Um, President Obama came out against raw cannabis. The National Drug Court has come out against raw cannabis. How can you be against a vegetable that sustains cell protection, cell health, and prevents disease. And, and especially in when the way that it's being uh, taken, it, it doesn't even have a psychoactive effect. So what are they so afraid of here, you know? Um, the, the, preve- the prevention of disease. Exactly. Um, how, how, how long will it stay well? If, if I juice some cannabis and put it in a glass jar and put it in my refrigerator, how long will it stay good for? Do I have to consume it immediately? Is it better to consume it faster uh, upon juicing in order to get more of the active ingredients? Or? Yeah, the really best way is the way that every other animal has and does use cannabis. They, they bite it off a living plant. And... and uh, if you chew the leaf, it treats the gingivitis. I had one patient who had four to five millimeter pockets where the gums had retracted from the teeth, made a mouthwash, swished it around. Um, there are incredible number of antibacterials um, in both the cannabinoid and terpene classes and went back to the dentist and the gums had reattached. So chewing the leaf is a, is a little rough because the flavor and texture is a little unusual. Um, the results are stunning. You can mix, take a bite of jicama or radish or carrot. You can mix it with the vegetables to kind of buffer some of the flavor and texture. Um, the, the, so the fresher it is, the better it is because those terpenes, those aromatic molecules, get sucked out by frost-free refrigerators and freezers. So if you do juice it, seal it up very tight to keep the terpenes in, in the drink. Um, but like I said, ideally, um, you, you take it off the plant and you chew on it or immediately consume it. Um, Obviously, uh, you know, if, if you juice it, um, if the glass is clean and sterile, you, you know, you've put boiling water in it and poured it out, and so you don't have a lot of maybe bacteria in there, and, and, and the vegetables are relatively clean. It can last quite a period of time, I mean, like days or, or longer. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like we don't do that, do that with our arugula or our romaine. Let's juice the romaine, put it in a glass, keep it for four to five days. It's a matter of uh, the biggest issue with raw cannabis is access, exactly. and access right. equals right. convenience. If you can't get a hold of it, it's not convenient, and you tend to kind of say, well, it'd be really nice, but you know, dispensaries generally don't want to carry raw cannabis because it's refrigerated, it becomes like a food product. You've got probably other public health issues. You, um, you'd rather just sell a little bit of dried bud and make, you know, make your sale and go forward. Um, but, uh, you know... If we could move raw cannabis into the grocery store where it belongs, they've got the ability to refrigerate and and, and to transport. And but um, I used to be hopeful for that, and now I'm fearful that uh, they really, really, really do not want to uh, allow uh, you know, Americans to have access to uh, dietary cannabis. Yeah. 
Well, we're just about time for our second break. We'd like to thank you for joining us, Dr. William Courtney. Do you have a website where people can uh, find out some more about what you're doing? I do. Uh, if you go to cannabisinternational.org, um, if you've had raw cannabis, there's a forum. We're asking for people to kind of put their stories up there. Um, you could send me an email at Courtney at mcn.org. Um, and I do, uh, I do consult with patients the world over from South Africa and Slovenia to Japan. And, um, and so I'm available for uh, individual consultations. Um, and we're down here in this tropical island. There's 100 medicinal and dietary plants that we are so excited about learning more about. Um, and uh, just as I said, it's a, a we must, we must protect raw cannabis. You know, it's it, it really is. Uh, it's a miracle uh, plant. An yes, unacceptable thing to allow that to be uh, removed in the name of food safety or whatever uh, language they're going to spin, um, because it really is. It's just it's so amazing for everything from a healthy mouth, which leads to a healthy body, uh, to to cellular health and cellular safety and protection. And um, please, please commit to. Uh, standing up and insisting that uh, dietary non-psychoactive, low-dose raw cannabis um, remain available or be made available to all 7 billion people on this planet. Yes, yes. amen yes. to that. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thank you for uh, being on our show. And uh, I'm definitely going to try this with my next harvest. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, it, it really is. There's a lot of information at Canvas International. You really, you're looking for the veg side of it. Um, there's a very little production first 30 days, mounts in the second month, peaks at the end of the third day, 80 to 90, falls off sharply as it goes into flower. So uh, the raw leaf is stronger in the veg phase, but oh. wild animals eat it across its whole life cycle. So once again, I would ignore Dr. Courtney and go with what the wild animals in your neighborhood are doing. And, <laughs> so uh, so stop, feeding, stop feeding all those leaves that I pull off and veg to my chickens and start eating them myself is what you're saying? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, give them the bud, you eat the leaf. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. And, uh, we're going to go to break now. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. Everyone's noise from Vegas. Originating from Las Vegas, Nevada, you're listening to LV Rocks. Noise from Vegas. Getting Legal offers an informative and simple way for you to get your marijuana card. Why come to Getting Legal to get your marijuana card? We have a 99% approval rating and the lowest price in town. Avoid legal problems. Getting Legal can get you legal fast. Ready for a new start? Come in now and get relief from your chronic conditions affecting your quality of life. Call Getting Legal today at 702-979-9999. That's 702-979-9999. Or visit our website at gettinglegal.com to get your marijuana card today. Hi, I'm Armin Yamanijan, CEO of Essence Dispensaries, and I'd like to let you know a little bit about our company. As a completely complimentary service, our on-site nurse is here to meet with any patient or non-patient to discuss dosing and best practices. We have three convenient locations. We have one location on Tropicana between Decatur and Jones, which is our west side location. Our Henderson location is on the corner of Sunset and Green Valley Parkway, and we're proud to announce that we have the first and only dispensary on the Las Vegas Strip, on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara. Our prices are the lowest prices in town and the highest quality medicine. Please come and see us at one of our three convenient locations or visit us at EssenceVegas.com. You can also call us at 702-978-7575. Once again, the number is 702-978-7575. Attention medical marijuana patients. Do you know what your cannabis actually contains? Are there heavy metals, pesticides, or even mold? And what strength is it really? And is it really what you need? Well, the answers to these questions are simple. DigiPath Labs. DigiPath Labs is a Nevada state-approved medical marijuana testing facility whose scientists carefully test products for safety and potency all within the state's rigorous mandate. You can buy with confidence and trust knowing DigiPath Labs has tested your medicine. If you're a licensed grower, dispenser, extractor, or edibles manufacturer in Nevada and want unparalleled customer service and consumer confidence, go to digipathlabs.com and find out what we can do for you. And as a patient, only go to dispensaries that carry the DigiPath Labs seal of approval. That's digipathlabs.com, D-I-G-I-P-A-T-H labs.com. 
or call us at 702-209-2429. That's 702-209-2429. LV Rocks, noise from Vegas. Welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour live on LVRocksRadio.com. We just uh, had a interesting discussion with uh, Dr. William Courtney. That was a whole lot of fun. And now we're back into yeah. some local no Las Vegas news. I mean, with all the stuff that happened this last week, uh, I think the thing that got the most news coverage was the opening of the Cannabis Chapel on 420. They did, yeah. uh, they did their very first two uh, 420 weedings, as they like to call them. <laughs> weedings, and, and, yes. uh, no cannabis consumed at the chapel itself, but it was a cannabis-themed wedding uh, with references to the plant during the uh, reception and that. Right. Uh, the first couple was actually out of Arizona, and she is a patient, and they've been waiting for something like this to open. And when they saw that it was happening here in Las Vegas, they booked their stuff and planned their weeding right <laughs> off the bat. That's, that's fantastic. I love and, uh, it. I love it. They, they, didn't bring it uh, they didn't bring any guests, but there were sure a lot of people in attendance just with the news crews alone there yeah, was right every news Dozens. station yeah. telemundo the associated press was there uh, i mean there was there were just so many of them that's great and uh, and it, it turned out really good and then they also held their very first sunday session this last sunday which was a kind of churchish kind of thing but not really it was it was a it was a sermon about the plant and how this plant is such a great healing power and it was very inspirational i, I left there feeling happy really? you know what i mean very Good. very happy it was a very inspirational sermon so they're looking to have some more of those here um looks like the next sunday service will be next month they're going to do a monthly right now anybody interested in uh doing a a weeding uh they're <laughs> booking those any day you want to do them so you can contact them at the uh cannabis chapel lv.com so. wow wow that's something yep. that's fantastic so. hell yeah and then uh we well, a, a few things around uh, Nevada happening. And well, some gotta, weird things, I think. Well, I had a story out of a place called Carlin, Nevada. This story comes from the Elko Daily Free Press, and it says, A pizza delivery driver leads to marijuana bust involving juveniles. The Carlin Police Department arrested a mother for drug possession and contributing to the delinquency of four minors Wednesday after a search resulted in finding nine ounces of marijuana and the juveniles consuming the plant. The department was notified of the potential drug use by a pizza delivery man who smelt marijuana while at the residence. That sucks. They got ratted out by their pizza delivery guy. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, maybe they didn't tip him. <laughs> yeah. But really, it's like, what if what if she was a patient? You know, did it doesn't even lead hmm. into did he see the kids or anything like that. All it says is he smelt marijuana and called the cops. Well, this is a medical cannabis state. Yeah. What if... You know, she happened to be a patient and all of a sudden had the damn cops knocking on her door. And stupidly, she said, yeah, you can come search the house. No, why would you do that knowing you have over half a pound of weed in plain sight or obviously where they could come find it very quickly? And, you know, not giving the kids warning, hey, the cops are here. You might want to put that out. Like n none of that, yeah. you know. So it's hard to feel sorry for right. for some people in that way. But still, it's uh, it, it, it seems a little... Yeah, a little ridiculous on both sides, uh, on all sides, really. Mm -hmm. The pizza delivery guy for being a narc, the cops for for looking at it, and the mom for giving the the kids weed and yeah. allowing it to go on in plain sight. It's all it's all ridiculous all the way around. Right, so. and they actually caught the kids in the back room. Yeah, they caught them in the act with How a bong and a gram or whatever, and and nine ounces of other weed. And I mean, the, stu the lady's just downright stupid. Yeah, and she's just downright the whole thing stupid. Was, the they whole even let them ridiculous. search the house and everything. It's stupid. Right. Well, we we had another we had another uh, what they call grow house bust last Tuesday right after yeah. our show, and uh, it was originally reported uh, out on the southwest end of Vegas, uh, a house, and it was they said twenty five plants, and now all of a sudden they're saying fifty plants. Of course, I saw <laughs> the pictures of the of the bust on the news station, and it was literally two to three lights and less than twenty five plants. Yeah, and what they were showing there was, in my opinion not a grow house um it looked like a patient grow the equipment wasn't grow house quality equipment it was right. janky know, old stuff yeah it was yeah. stuff you find on craigslist or you know you get handed down stuff it you right. know it wasn't top of the line stuff they they, they didn't mm. have carbon filters scrubbing the air they had they had ionic breezes to try to clean the air this is this is not a school. professional grow thing right um 
This is somebody with a couple plants. Some, yeah, it, the patient level is what it <coughs> right. was. Yeah, but we and if you were, had two patients was, in a house, you could have 24 yeah, but We haven't heard whether it was a patient or not yeah. or any of that. We haven't really gotten that word down yet because no. they don't, you but know. But it is interesting or, because. Uh, you know, what led them to it. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> they rarely right. they rarely say that. So. But there's not that many busts in the in the news as much anymore of no. a patient. So when they have these, they really do exaggerate an awful lot, don't mm -hmm. they? Yeah, so, I mean, we'll, we'll have to see what more comes out of that. Yeah. Um, they said the search lasted into the evening, and they found three pounds of finished product and more than 50 plants. As I say, I, I, yeah. I looked at it on the news, and I saw the piles of the stuff that they had pulled out of the house, and it sure looked like a more like a, a yeah. home grow for a patient than a commercial-scale operation of any sort. Yeah, and I know you think three pounds is an awful lot of weed. Yeah, if, if you're uh, having a party, it's an awful lot of weed. But the truth is, um, I'm a chronic patient. If I only smoked bud, I would be smoking eight pounds of weed a year, okay, mm -hmm. as a chronic patient. You figure it out. Uh, that's an ounce and a quarter of weed a week, you know. I mean, do it, do the math, and um, and some weed doesn't go as far as others, and so on and so forth. And if you're making oil and butter and all the other things, you're going to even use more, for God's sake. So three pounds oh, for two adults. And people in a think, house that's, really oh my God, you're going through an ounce half a week. A that's a lot, but that's not really a lot of weed. You might have it one goes, big harvest and get three pounds. It, it, it goes much faster than you think because you yeah, know, you've does. got you've got the three months between your harvests. You know, generally, uh, and. I, I with two patients in our house we can we can harvest out you know close to a pound and within three months it's we're like scraping the bottom yeah, if you're smoking I mean, a, you if you're I mean? smoking so a gram of flowers a day so, which yeah. is like not my if you're smoking a gram of flowers a day that's 28 right mm -hmm. like a, a 30 gram you know an ounce per month yeah. or more yeah, yeah your Whitman sampler fast. box is three pounds you know you could yeah. eat that the whole damn thing <laughs> and that's legal <laughs> and that's legal yeah. and it might but, be sinful too and, and, and if you're using it, it if you're using it in edibles and that it goes a heck of a lot yeah that's oh, yeah. what i'm saying if you're cooking and making butter and stuff oh my goodness gracious you're going to go through an awful lot of it you yeah. know product i mean just smoking pure bud you'd be rationing it out you know so. But that's what we do here on the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. If you're new to us, because uh, we do have a lot of new people with this new radio station, and we welcome you. Uh, we're a nonprofit patient advocacy group here in Las Vegas and all of Nevada, and we've been at it longer than anyone else. We've changed the law. None of us get paid. We're nonprofit, so if you want to donate to us, we sure appreciate it. And, of course, support uh, Las Ve LV Rocks Radio uh, and all our sponsors and everything else. But you can go to weekend702.org and check us out and get to know us and join us at some of our events yeah and when you come out to our events uh a lot of these events they're uh for our members but you can purchase a temporary membership for the day mm -hmm. depending on the event they're either they're either 10 to 25 dollars for a temporary membership um all of those proceeds goes to help patients who can't afford their cards people that are disabled veterans people on social security who can't work that can't mm -hmm. come up with that $250 a year to get their card all at once. Right. So what they do is they apply through us, and uh, we get doctors to donate visits to us, and we donate them right back to the patients, and then we uh, help them with their state fees so right. that they can get onto the program completely for free or at a very nominal charge. Um, and it allows them access to this plant that they wouldn't have access to otherwise. Right. So um, that's, that's what we're out there doing on a day-to-day -day basis and then educating you right you know. plus we're fighting for your rights too we have workshops we have uh, job uh, fairs we've got all kinds of things going on we 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 try to have good guests on uh, a lot of sponsors and doctors and things like that but we also have politicians on because we know we have to woo them and so uh, we're not we're tripartisan so we we kind of support them all anyone that supports us so go to weekend702.org get to know us and join us at some of our events we're all over Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. And, uh, yeah, join us on, if you join us on a meetup, meetup.com, it's the Las Vegas Medical Marijuana Meetup. Uh, you'll find us on there, and uh, you can get a, a calendar of all of our events. They're also on our website. Meetup, uh, they'll, they'll email you our events. And uh, keep an eye out. We, got, uh, we don't have them up yet, but we're planning a, a potluck next month in May, a potluck in June, and then a big pool party, our, our eight year anniversary party mm. in july so and i've got i've got a couple things i need to bring to the board on that i think we might 
this one may be on the same level as the 420 party that we just threw. Wonderful. Yeah, so they, they are getting more popular. Yeah, they're getting better and better mm -hmm. every time. Yeah, right. exactly. So, you know, get out there, support us. You know, you be your own best advocate. That's that's the, the one thing that mm -hmm. we really need to stress to everybody because nobody's going to get up and speak for you as well as you can speak for yourself. So, you know. The uh, first word an ad activist is act. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, don't you know, don't just sit back on the couch and expect everybody else to get these laws changed. If if it's something that you're not happy with, you know, contact us. We'll help you. We'll help you get up there. We'll t tell you the right people to get to, you know, get these laws changed. The more people that write into these, uh, you know, to our assemblymen and senators and the people in charge and actually call right in and get in front of them, the louder our voice becomes. Yeah. You know, because, you know, they're like, geez, every day I turn around, there's yeah. more people coming to me about this topic. And eventually they have to listen, you know. So that's that's kind of what we're about yeah. here at We Can is, right. you know, get out there and fight for our rights. You know, this plant, as you know, Dr. Courtney said, we need to protect it. This mm. plant is a plant. It's a flower. You know what I mean? This is not something that the government should be regulating on us, telling us anything that we're, we should be doing with. This should be an open thing just like growing tomatoes you know yeah absolutely as he says it's, it's a vegetable it's a I, I think they should look at it that way and i've yeah. always thought they should look at it as a vegetable as a piece of lettuce or anything you're going to consume yeah but people body. don't perceive it as you food know. you know even yeah. me i've been a consumer for a long long yeah. time and i i've been aware of cannabis juicing before but wasn't aware of the uh the beneficial qualities right. of it you know it's just yeah. we have to start changing people's mindset to say Absolutely. that it is food people joke you're like yeah it's food whatever it's weed no no it's not it is more than that and we have right. to start start i guess educating people do what we do best that's yeah, right. really. Absolutely. And uh, and if you have any good stories like that about products or, or, or certain things that work for you, uh, we certainly like to know about them. And then we might do a little research and uh, who knows, we might have you on the air or maybe the person that makes that product or, or whatever. Yeah, go ahead and contact us through the contact button on our website, wecan702.org. And uh, we'll get your email and uh, we'll get back to you and maybe we'll have you on the air or just uh, tell your story. So Right. And yeah. you can always call us in, too, because we do have a live studio line. So next week uh, we'll put that out again and uh, we'll be here. Same time, same station. Yeah. And you can always if you miss an episode or you want to see uh, you can look at our archives on weekend 702.org and, and, and watch all the previous shows are on YouTube. All right, and uh, with that, be sure you check out our sponsors, Nevada Pure, Sahara Wellness, Essence Vegas, DigiPath Labs, and Getting Legal. And make sure to come join us uh, this next Friday at First Friday. It's going to be a lot of fun, lots of great products out there, and we look forward to seeing everybody at our events down here in the future. So with that, been a good show. Been Thank good you, guys, show. and we'll see, see you, you next week. week. See you on the radio. All right. Originating from Las Vegas, Nevada, you're listening to LV Rocks. Noise from Vegas. Nevada Cannabis News with Kurt Dukach, Perry Haichu, Michael McCullough, and William Beach Baker. Live Tuesdays from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Time on LVRocksRadio.com. Nevada Cannabis News features news about what is happening in the cannabis industry around the world. We feature guests such as politicians, police officers, medical marijuana establishment owners, industry experts, doctors, cannabis celebrities, community leaders, and more.